Welcome to Confessions of an SEO. This is Carolyn Holzman. Bottom line is this. I'm going to be honest with you about my experiences in SEO, whether it's client experience or what I see in Google and my research and testing. And likely you're not going to hear any of this validated by Google if you like to think that they are driven to have your business's best interest at heart. Remember, they're a multinational business that last year pulled in over $200 billion and likely more than half of that from its paid ads division. So if you're an SEO, I get you. And when I say that, I mean, I really, really get you. And if you're a business owner, I also get you. Before I was an SEO, I was a local business owner for decades, and I still feel your pain. So let's get started. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 20. Now this week, I honestly don't know how to talk about this except to say, this is what I'm seeing. Now, I recognize that were it not for the intense desire to be a better SEO every day, and what I mean by that is I don't mean the want to want to and then stop when things get weird or uncomfortable or hard. I mean the real, I don't care how stupid this looks or sounds kind of desire. I want to know how this thing works. Now, a lot of SEOs try to impress potential clients by showing them their revenue revenue numbers. And it makes me feel kind of like when I see that, that we're in some kind of personal injury niche, but without the injury and death. You know, the way lawyers show the amount that they've recovered for a client, and that's why you should hire them, because they'll do the same for you. So I acknowledge SEO is a business. Hell, I enjoy earning a living while I figure this thing out. But to get back to what this episode is about, I spent a couple of hours um, this week looking for topics. I, you know, it doesn't have to be fully fleshed out. I mean, just the whiff of a topic, something that may be in the news or maybe not be in the news, but might be interesting to other SEOs and business owners who are trying to figure out who they can trust and need to understand SEO better in order to do that. So I was maybe trawling in Facebook groups this week thinking I might find a particular situation. And what I found was... Well, it was, it was not just one thing. I, I found that there were a lot of people who they've hung out an SEO sign. This is what they do. And, and then they say the darndest things. Now, there are a lot of people out there who are optimized, optimizing their content to the tools. Now, I know I say that like it's a bad thing. I, I do think it's a short-sighted thing. And I've got nothing against tools. But I am gobsmacked at how few SEOs actually look at what Google actually does. There are some that are like, well, Google is too complicated and smart, so we can't know anything, but listen to me. And then there are others that appear to be walking in a petrified forest. Now that phrase is a personal one. It actually was a compliment given in a school paper review of a theater performance. It was about this guy, his name is Kevin Lakey, who was in the theater theater department at uh, Florida State University. And whenever he was on stage, they said he was such a natural actor, it appeared as though he was walking through a petrified forest. So when it comes to SEO, I see most everybody is in the middle and likely bunched up to just left of the Google is too smart crowd. You know, and they spend so much time trying to do things that they think or that they've been told um, that this is what you need to do. Things like increasing their domain authority or their SEO surfer score or getting a better SEMrush audit score or the ever favorite core web vitals. And just as many are sweating these things, There are others who have achieved what they thought would make the difference in their SEO effort, whether it was domain authority or surfer scores or core web vitals. And now they're bemoaning that their efforts did not lead them to where they wanted to go. So now what? I am an empathetic person. 
This kind of makes me feel bad for those folks who I know are trying really hard. A common misconception I've noticed is that uh, people believe tools have some kind of connection to Google. And when you couple that with the quest for the easy button in SEO, it does make sense, you know, that that the human mind would conflate those together. Like if you have a certain score from a certain software and you're not ranking, something is wrong. Last week's episode was about the Google training where the Google employees said something about keyword density and the shock and the horror from the SEO community about Google giving bad advice was truly astonishing. It made me want to ask, has anybody looked at what is currently ranking? In a mastermind group I belong to, everyone was looking at the keyword density of the most used terms of the first hundred results. Now, to be fair, this is a group where everyone uses Quora. And with all due respect, to me, in my experience, Quora compared to other SEO tools is like Photoshop being compared to Corel Draw. And I used Corel Draw because I knew how to work it, but I never press printed with it. And I never allowed anyone else to do when I ran the CD shop, but I could show my ideas and then hire a real designer to make it look better and be set up so there would be more ink control in the files. Anyway, in that group, it was really fun to hear how high some of these densities were. And for any listeners who think, "Uh uh-oh, you're going to get punished when Google catches on. Well, these sites have been punished all the way to the number one spot for years for some of them. And, And I get it. You know, some people get access to SEO software, and that seems to to suffice, you know, and I'm sure they don't know any better because I guess some software insight is more helpful than none. I'll grant you that. There was someone who's bemoaning that they had lost a lot of search terms they were ranking for, and their traffic dropped, and they hadn't done anything to the site. Nothing had changed on it at all. Now, I'm pretty good at taking not a lot of info and finding things, and so I did. I found what they were talking about. I found their site, and I looked at it in SEMrush. Turns out they they did lose some terms, but the more they lost, the same amount they gained. And this time, the keywords they gained were in, and this is my estimation, much more tuned to what they were actually about So it was probably less traffic, but it might have been more targeted. And what I noticed in this situation was all the stress over what a piece of software said and the prevailing assumption that we are the only ones targeting a particular term. We speak about SERP volatility like it always means down, but It's really just describing movement, and moving up is just as valid as moving down. And when you move up, or someone jumps in for a keyword that you're ranking for, it also means someone has to go down. Sorry, not sorry. I have a crypto developer client. They launched a new page out of the gate. It not only landed in the number one spot, but it turned into a featured snippet. Hoo-ha! So literally... Everybody in that SERP for that term went down one spot. 100 out of 100 moved down. Pretty volatile. Did I find every possible entity? Probably not. Did I work to increase the domain authority of their domain? Nope. Did I spend one second on increasing their core web vitals? Nope. But I did look and see what was already ranking. I made a calculated guess, thanks to the data in Quora, about what it was gonna take to rank on page one. I advised the client as they were writing what specific words, groups of words, that they should use and use liberally as long as it didn't make what they were writing unreadable. By the way, that last part is really important. If you wanna rank for something, you better have those words on your page. 
I was talking this week to a colleague about keywords and topics and how much we can't see into Google's algorithm, but we can do what we can based on the data. And the rest is Kentucky windage. (laughs) Now, if you're not familiar with that phrase, it's a practice in shooting of adjusting the aim to account for wind, hence windage. But you do it without using any tools, just the person knowing from experience. So for my Twilight fans out there, when it comes to SEO, part of this is scientific, part of it is Kentucky windage, and that's as close as we can get. And that's going to do it for today. Thank you for being a listener. Special thank you to the sponsors of Confessions. Thank you. You really encourage me doing these shows. Thank you. And subscribe to Confessions wherever you're listening to it. It's on Audible, Spotify, Amazon Alexa. And if you haven't settled on one source for your podcast or you just don't want to sign up, you can just Google Confessions of an SEO. You cannot miss it. All of us stand to make more business and success together when both the SEOs and SEO clients understand each other and Google better. It has been my pleasure to be your host. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the service. Thank you.